I found myself constantly scrolling on TikTok and not remembering what video I was watching. I was mindlessly just swiping. I couldn't recall anything. I was being not very mindful of what I was doing. I was just a zombie scrolling and my brain felt like it was melting out of my ears. Every other swipe, it's an ad. Every other swipe, it's a live. Like it's not content that I want to be taking in. It just made me feel kind of frozen. That's what I call it when I'm just swiping and I know I want to stop, but I just sit there stuck. Scroll, scroll. I'm like, maybe the next one I'll like scroll, 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 scroll. Now, since I'm aware of the situation, I have made a list of things to do to help cure my boredom and to also keep me from being a TikTok zombie, just swiping my life away, wasting all my time. And then I get stressed because I've spent like three hours sitting in my chair when I was supposed to be doing homework or I was supposed to do all these other tasks and I spent time on TikTok and I couldn't tell you a single video that I watched. If this sounds familiar, if it, if it rings a bell, if this is you, watch this video and I hope that one of these things will help you replace your TikTok addiction. If you're new here, my name is Amanda. Nice to meet you. Like and subscribe if you like this video. Let's get into it. So I wrote out 25 things to do when you're bored and I've kind of separated everything into different categories. We have things to do when you want to feel active, when you want to feel in control of your life, when you just want to feel entertained. We're going to start with if you want to move your body. That's the category we are going to hop right into. Our very first thing on our list is you can go on a hike, a run, or a walk. And if you have a dog, you can take your dog with you. I love to take my dog Theo on walks around my neighborhood. <laughs> And there's also parks and things nearby and it is just good because you get your heart beating you're moving you're exercising so then you've ticked off two things you did a fun activity outdoors where you're breathing in fresh air you're spending time in nature and also you are exercising so you're doing something very productive and it'll make you feel better later in the day our second thing is you can do an at-home workout there are tons of really good videos on youtube that are great workouts i always do this pilates at home workout and it doesn't require any equipment and it's beginner friendly i just search pilates at home workout and a whole bunch of options will pop up and it's really really nice Third is you can go do a workout class. If you're a university student, a whole bunch of campuses have gyms and in these gyms they have special classes that you can sign up for and they're free if you're a student. I know my school has Pilates, yoga, there's aquatics classes, there's Zumba, there's so many options and they're free. So if you're a university student, make sure you take advantage of them while you have them. If you are not a university student, I know that a lot of gyms offer classes, but you do have to pay for them. Now let's get into if you want to feel creative. Something I love to do is make Pinterest boards. I'm always making Pinterest boards, whether it's for a trip that I want to go on, I'll kind of coordinate a whole bunch of outfit inspiration or just photos that kind of inspire me. Inspiration for what you want to thrift. So you'll put a whole bunch of pieces that you like off Pinterest into a board. So that way when you go thrift shopping, you'll have a good idea on what to look out for. Scrolling through Pinterest is a lot more of a mindful activity than scrolling through TikTok. I know it's both scrolling but if you're creating boards, you're kind of curating it towards you instead of just swiping to swipe. Something that I've been loving lately has been coloring pages. And you don't need to go buy an expensive coloring book. You can literally print them off. If you have access to a computer and a printer, 
I made a Pinterest board with a whole bunch of cute coloring pages on it and I will link it down below so you guys can see it. And it's just a whole bunch of pages that I just thought were really cute and I printed one off as well and I've already colored it. And it's a really nice activity, especially if you listen to music or you just have a video playing in the background. So you can just calm down and just focus on the moment, focus on coloring, not worrying about anything super stressful. This is an example of one that I recently did. They're so fun to just color and it just makes me feel really happy. So if you are interested in coloring this page or a whole bunch of similar ones, I will link my Pinterest board down below. And these are the markers that I use. They are the King Art double-ended markers. I really like them. I have two packs and I got both of them at TJ Maxx. You can make a playlist. You can make one on any apps like Spotify or Apple Music. You can even watch music videos on YouTube, figuring out what your music taste is, listening to new music. You'll just have specific playlists for whatever vibe or mood that you're gonna be in in the future. You can make one for when you're gonna exercise. You can make one for when you're gonna clean your room. You can make one for any specific thing and it just makes the vibes of whatever activity you're doing 10 times better. I always listen to a calming playlist whenever I'm studying and it just really helps me focus and get my work done. You can try a new hobby. I know there's a whole bunch of crafty hobbies that are out there like sewing, crochet, pottery, anything like that. And there are tons of classes at craft supply stores or even pottery studios and you can sign up for them. You can go in. Or you could even do something more simple like painting and you would just have to go get some paint sets or maybe you already have paint at your house and then you can just try something new. I know trying something new can be intimidating but you'll never know that you like something unless you try it. Last summer I went to a pottery hollow which is a place where you can go paint pottery and it was so fun and this is my little mug I made. It's just pink checkerboard but it was such a fun experience. You just pick out your pottery, it's already made. This could be a great alternative to actually going to a pottery class where you make the pottery, because this way it's already created and you just paint it and they put it in the kiln themselves and then they'll call you whenever it's ready. And I love this because it actually matches the blanket on my bed. Is that not adorable? Come on. You can bake or cook something new. There's so many recipes out there of yummy things to try and bake. And maybe if you don't want to make something from scratch, you can just put some of those pre-made cookies on a plate, put them in the oven, and then you have something that's a yummy snack and you did something that you might not do in your everyday routine. Something that I've been wanting to try, and it's not like a crazy recipe, but I've seen it online a lot, is the Bulldog Ramen. I really want to order some and try it out. So if I do, I will definitely make sure to let you guys know how it is. It could just be something as simple as that. Literally making ramen and then making an egg, putting that in with it. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just something out of your comfort zone that you might not do every day. Let's get into some things if you kind of want to escape reality for a little bit. You can play video games. There's tons of different options for consoles. You can play on PS4, Switch, Xbox, PC, iPad, or your phone. Any device you have, there's going to be games, which is super fun. And some game recommendations that I have for you guys would definitely be Fortnite. I love Fortnite. I've played it since I was in high school. I've been playing it for a long time.
super cute skins that you can get for your character. You can kind of customize her to your vibe or him and that game is super fun especially because you can play with friends but you could also play solo another great game would be minecraft if you want to kind of build a world this game is for someone who has a lot of patience so sometimes i'm not the best with it because you have to punch the tree get the wood build the axe cut down more wood build a pickaxe get the stone it's a lot of steps, but if you're in the mood to just game, maybe like sip on your little drink, eat a little snack, and just play for a while, then it's perfect for you. And I do love it, but sometimes my patience is not where it needs to be to play that game. A great game for two players is It Takes Two. I played this with my boyfriend before and it is really, really fun. It's such a cute multiplayer game where you rely on one another to move forward in the game. And I believe it's only like $10. Fortnite is free and Minecraft costs, I think around $20. Another great game would be Sims if you like designing houses and having a character that's life you can kind of mold. You can choose their job, you can get them married, they can have babies, and you can just evolve their life if that's the kind of game you like. Or if you're into a more adventure type of game, you could play Hogwarts Legacy, which is really cool if you're a Hogwarts fan. And there's also Genshin Impact, which is also an adventure type game where you can go on quests and things like that. It's really cool. Next, you can rewatch one of your favorite movies and there's a whole bunch of streaming platforms. There's Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, Max, there's so many options, limitless possibilities for movies for you to watch. You can binge a series. What I would watch would be the Divergent series, the Hunger Games series, Harry Potter, Star Wars, any of those really awesome staple series. Rewatch because you know you liked them at one point. So you'll probably like them again and you might catch on to things that you didn't get the very first time. If you watch anime, you can start a new anime or just a TV series if you're just into normal TV. Right now I've been watching Solo Leveling, Free Run, and The Apothecary Diaries and sadly they're all ending right now so I'm gonna have to find new series to watch but watching an anime that is currently coming out is really helpful because it gives you something to look forward to every week so you'll know you'll have your episode that comes out on Saturday or Sunday so you can look forward to that during the weekend. There's also tons of 12 episode animes that you can watch in a single day. So if you're just looking for like something that'll take up a few hours, you can binge a whole show. You can start a new book. There's so many great recommendations for books online and mangas as well. Here are some manga that I have. This is The Apothecary Diaries and this manga goes with the anime that I told you guys I've been watching and I really loved the show and I know it's going to be a while until the next season comes out so I wanted to start reading the manga so I can get caught up and kind of just experience the story before the show comes out because I don't think I can wait that long. The next category we're going to go into is if you're in the mood to pamper yourself to feel good. One idea could be painting your nails or your toenails. You guys know I love to do my French manicures with my gel. Maybe you don't like to paint your nails. You could just trim them, file them, you could put cuticle oil on, just something to help strengthen your nails. Just a little pampering to help yourself feel good. You can do a face mask. There's so many affordable face masks at places like TJ Maxx and Target, but I really recommend TJ Maxx. You can get a set of about five masks for like five dollars. If you want to feel kind of in control of your life, I recommend rearranging your room. I would always do this when I was younger and I was stressed out. 
I just felt the need to change up my room at whatever hour of the night it was. You don't have to fully change everything up, but maybe you want to put your bed at a different angle. And it just kind of puts yourself back in control of your life. Even though it's such a minor thing, it'll make the hugest difference. Speaking of your room, you can redecorate your room. And this can be really simple and affordable. On Pinterest, you can just search up cute little aesthetic images, print them off, and just make a collage on your wall. I would always do that and it always turned out so cute and aesthetic. You can also get affordable decor at places like Target in their dollar section. They always have really cute seasonal items, but you can sometimes find pieces that will work for your room. On Valentine's Day, they had these adorable candles that came out and it looks so perfect right over there with my other items. And this was only $3 and it's so cute. I don't burn it. It smells good. It smells like roses, but I just keep it as a little cutie little decor piece. Some other affordable options for getting cute decor could be the dollar store, especially Dollar Tree. Now it's $1.25 instead of a dollar per item, but you can still find super cute, affordable things. These roses all came from the dollar store and it was just one of those fake rose bouquets. And I just cut them all off and I put them in this little vase. And I just love how it turned out. It looks fancy, like that looks, that looks bougie. And it was literally like $5 to make. And it looks so good with the rest of my room. These next two ideas, you definitely need to be in the mindset for them. You can deep clean your room. You can vacuum everything, wash your sheets, wipe down your surfaces, spray down your mirrors. If you have a bathroom, you can deep clean your bathroom. I'll actually be doing a spring cleaning video coming up. If you need some more inspiration or encouragement for cleaning your room, make sure to stay tuned because that will be coming up sometime soon as well. In addition to deep cleaning your room, you can go through all of your clothing. Do a deep clean, deep dive, get rid of everything you don't wear because I know that tank top from sixth grade that's sitting in your closet and you're like, oh, but I love this tank top. I wore it to summer camp. Are you going to wear it again? When's the last time you wore it? When's the last time you washed it? That's what I thought. Say bye to all those random things that are just taking up room in your closet that you don't need. They're taking up space in your room. They're taking up space in your brain and we're cleaning everything out. So send it on its way. You can sell things online. So you're making a little bit of money. You could put it on Poshmark. You could put it on Depop, tons of resale websites, or you can take it to a consignment place like Plato's Closet. You will get money for the things that are just sitting in your room. So wouldn't you rather have money to buy a new shirt that you're gonna wear? This next category of things is for you if you want to feel more comfortable being alone. Personally, I struggled with this a ton. I thrive off of social interaction with other people and being alone kind of sends me, I'm not doing the best when I'm alone, but through the past few months and years, I've really worked on it and figured out things that have helped me become more comfortable with going out and doing activities by myself. We can start out with going thrifting. If you pack your headphones or your earbuds and you bring your water bottle or you go pick up a drink on the way there, it makes the whole situation a lot less intimidating. If you get overly stimulated but you still want to go thrifting, you could also wear a hat because when you wear the hat, it's kind of like this. So this whole portion, I'm not seeing. So it's limiting the stimuli and you're able to focus on what you want to do. You don't want to be stressing out about how you're alone. There are all these people in the store. That's not what you're there to do. You're there to shop and enjoy your time going through all the aisles.
you can take yourself out to a cafe or a bookstore. You can read by yourself. You can get a drink or a little croissant or a snack or something that you enjoy. You can just sit at the booth or at the table by yourself. This will just allow for you to feel comfortable being by yourself in an environment where people are typically in groups. But if you go by yourself in a situation where there's other groups, it's gonna force you to kind of come to terms with being alone sometimes. And being alone is not bad. That's what I keep trying to tell myself and something I'm still working on, but it really isn't. This is one of my favorite things to do. This might be coming from the shopaholic side of me, but you can go walk around stores like Ulta, Sephora, and Target. I love to do this and I always tell myself I'm just going to look at everything, but I end up picking some things up. You can get ideas on products you want to try or things that you want to get in the future if you have self-control unlike me if you are trying to work on feeling comfortable by yourself go to the mall alone on a weekend day if you can do that then you can do anything you can go anywhere you are good if you can go to the mall by yourself because i hate when i'm like walking by myself and then i see a group of teenagers and i'm like so why is it so scary but why now am i like terrified i'm like look at your phone <laughs> pretend you're doing something is this just like like what is this what why why does that happen i don't know you can go to the mall you can shop around some of my favorite shops are paxson because i love brandy melville and they carry brandy melville and there's also yummy food at the mall as well The last two ideas on my list are if you need to digitally refresh yourself, you can go through your camera roll and clear everything out. Delete all of those random screenshots of the homework from multiple years ago because you don't need them anymore. Just taking up storage and making your phone slower. Clear out that camera roll. The last thing on our list is redecorating your iPad or your iPhone, if you have an iPhone or whatever phone you have, just redoing the wallpaper. So on my iPad, I have these cute gibbets and I have this cute screen as well. All of the little colored icons. There's tons of tutorials on YouTube that will teach you how to do this. And I believe I just use Widgetsmith for all of my widgets and it's free. So you just download cute photos off Pinterest, save them, and then you can make them your widget. I hope that some of the things in this video were helpful to you guys. Let me know what you guys end up trying or if you already do some of these things, let me know in the comments below or if you have any recommendations of things for me or anyone else to try out, please let me know below as well. I hope that these ideas of things to do will help you guys get rid of your TikTok addiction. I will see you in my next video. Bye!